When developing applications, it's really common that we need to be working with strings and looking for patterns within strings as well. Now in C Sharp, we have lots of different things built in where we can go look for things that start with a given string and with a given string, or even find different positions within a string where another substring exists. However, when we need to start working with more complicated pattern matching, we have to switch away from this and go over to something called the regular expression. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In this video, we're going to look at regular expressions or regex in C Sharp. Now, regular expressions can get incredibly complicated very fast, so I'm not going to do a super deep dive on all of the really ridiculous things that you can do with a regex, but instead I'll cover just the basics. We'll see some examples that you can extend and how you can apply them in code. A quick reminder to check that pinned comment for a link to my free weekly newsletter and my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's go over to Visual Studio and check this out. In Visual Studio here, I have three different examples that we're going to look at. And the first two are very similar to other string methods that we already have built in. But instead, we're going to be able to compare and contrast how these look. We'll start off with the starts with example. And this is going to be very similar to what we have built into the string method. So if I had a string that had anything in here like hello, I could do starts with directly on here. And we could check to see if there's another string that existed at the beginning of this string hello. But instead, we're going to use a regular expression to express the same type of thing here. So in this example, I have a list of input strings. We're going to talk about these in just a moment, but these are what we're going to be testing out. And if we look a little bit lower from line 23 to 24, we have a pattern and a regular expression is based on a pattern that we want to match against. And then I create the new regex instance. I'll finish walking through this example, but I want to show you a couple of different variations of how we can do this part in particular and the same code on line 28. And that's the other interesting part of this example, which is calling the match method on the regular expression that we've created. So once we have a regex, what we're able to do is try matching it against the different input strings. And in this example, we're going to go against these four input strings that we see here from line 17 to 20. Having a closer look at the pattern that we have here on line 23, we can see that it says hello, but it also has this special character at the beginning. And this is just a carrot or a hat character, right? It's a little arrow that's pointing up. And for regular expressions, this is going to indicate that it's the beginning of the string that we want to check against. If you take that piece of information and you think about the other part, hello here that we have, when we go to do this match operation, it's going to say that we want to match hello against the beginning of the string that we have. And if we have a quick peek at the different inputs that we have here, we can see that line 17, that starts with hello. Line 18 does not, so that shouldn't show up in the match. 19 looks like it might, but there is some white space here, and regular expressions do care about white space. There's different things that we can put in place to either ignore white space or include it in the pattern that we want to match. And then line 20 also includes hello. So I would expect the text on line 17 and 20 to match in this particular case. But I did mention that I wanted to show you a couple of different ways that we could express the code that's from line 23 and 24, as well as 28. So we can do what we see here on line 24, where we create a new regex instance, but there is also a static method on the static class called regex, where we can say match. And we can do something very similar here, where if we put the input, which if we look here, uh, looks like Copilot's putting the wrong suggestion. So be careful when you're using Copilot. It's the input that we want first. So if I were to put something like hello here, uh, and then the pattern after, this is technically what it wants. We can use this static method instead of creating a new regex instance. Functionally, these will do the same thing where they match against the patterns. However, there is different performance characteristics of creating new regex instances, as well as using the static method. In a future video, which I'll link at the end of this one, we'll look at the different ways that we can use the regex instance, the regex static method, as well as some other options and the performance characteristics that go along with them. For now, if we go run this, we can go check the input and see what matches. Looking at the output from our example, we can see that hello world did match the string, right? So that's because the hello is at the very beginning. We can see something, something hello did not match. And that's because again, hello is not at the start. If we look at the third example, when we have the white space at the beginning, like I said, that is at the beginning of the string, right? The white space, not the word hello, so it won't match. And then this final one does also match as well. So the first and the last one 
do match because hello is at the start. I should also mention that by default, regular expressions will operate case sensitive. That's important to note because you do have full control over how you want that to match. You can either change the expression that you've created yourself to be able to handle upper and lower case, or you can add in regex options, which will allow you to change that. So for example, if we wanted it to match and not care about the different casing, we could add these regex options and add ignore case, just like this here that we see on line 24 now. That would mean that if we had something like this, this would in fact now match because it is case insensitive. Switching over to the next example, which we can do a little bit quicker, we can see ends with, which is basically the exact opposite of what we just looked at, right? So when we're talking about something ending with, instead of putting the caret character at the beginning of the pattern that we want to use, we use the dollar sign character. And in a regular expression, the dollar sign character denotes the end of the string. The setup for this is the exact same, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. I just wanted to show you that we can go run an example like this. So if we look at the inputs here, if we look at the pattern that we have as well, we're looking for words or strings in this case that end in ing. So ing has to be at the very end because that's what the dollar sign means. We need to be matching against the end of the string. So coding should in fact match because ing is at the very end of the string. If we look at I love programming, that's not going to match because there's an exclamation mark at the very end, right? That's the last character in the string, not ing. Same thing on line 43, there's an exclamation mark here. Coding is somewhere near the beginning of the string, so definitely not a match. And this fourth example, programming is at the end. Unlike the second example, there's no exclamation mark, right? So it should in fact match. Now I won't waste our time running this one because it's very much like we just saw except the beginning versus the end of the string. Up until this point, you might be saying, well, why the heck would I ever use this? We already have string starts with and string ends with. And you're totally right, because for these examples, I wasn't doing anything fancy at all with the regular expression. We were just looking for characters that were very straightforward, right? Even if you wanted to use a case insensitive comparison, you could do that with starts with and ends with built into the string method. But where regular expressions get really cool is that you can start looking for different patterns. You can start having things that are variable within the pattern and not just a hard-coded string. So what we're going to look at next, you could indeed apply to the first two examples we just saw with the starts with and ends with, but instead we're going to be looking for strings anywhere in another string, but they're going to be a little bit more variable. So let's go check out this example. I wanted to change this one up a little bit too, because what we were seeing before is when we were calling for match, what would happen is we would get a match object back and we could inspect that to see where that match occurred within the string. Kind of like giving us some information about that input string compared to the pattern and the location that it was matching at. So you could go inspect that to get some extra details. In this case, if you just wanted to do something like a contains, right? If we use that built-in string method, this is match is going to be very similar to that type of thing. But instead, we're not going to use hard-coded strings like we saw in the first examples. Instead, we're going to look for a pattern. So this should look a little bit more interesting here. I'm going to skip over these inputs for just a moment. And if we look at the pattern that we have on line 75, you can see that this looks a lot more complicated than what we saw in the beginning. This pattern is pretty straightforward, but if you haven't seen a regular expression before, it probably looks pretty wonky. I also mentioned at the beginning of this video that I don't want to spend a lot of time deep diving on all of the different things you can do with a regular expression. In fact, I actually find that ChatGPT is pretty good at giving you regular expressions that you want to match against, but there are online regular expression testers you can use. I like Regex Storm. It's a pretty good .NET one. And you can go run your regular expressions right in your browser and test them against inputs. So a nice combo that I like to use is asking ChatGPT, hey, can you match against these strings for me and give me the regular expression that would do that? And you can ask to give it to you in C sharp and it will give you a string that you can copy and paste very nicely because some of the characters that you use in a regular expression are backslashes and that can really mess stuff up inside of quotes. You can take that put it into regex storm and then match it against inputs and test it out. Super handy combo. When you go to drop it into the code, you have a pattern like this, let's say, 
I'll walk you through what this one does. And it's going to start with this part inside of the square brackets where we have zero to nine and a plus sign after. So inside of the square brackets, it's saying match any character that is the number zero through nine. And then the plus sign after that means at least one. So if we have a string that has at least one, we will continue trying to match. The next part here, again, using the square brackets, this is indicating like a range of characters that we're allowed to match on. So you can see that I have lowercase a through z and then uppercase a through z as well. So this means that it will match on characters in these ranges. Because it's inside of the square brackets, it will match on one of the characters in here. But this asterisk after, instead of a plus sign, that's going to mean zero, one, or more. So in fact, it means that anything here could be a match. That's kind of interesting, right? Now, if we look at the end, it's very much like what we have at the beginning. In fact, it's the exact same. It's just that it's following this other pattern. That means that we need to have at least two numbers. That's exactly what this pattern is suggesting. We need to have at least two numbers because if we look at the beginning, there must be at least one number here. There must be at least one number at the end. And there has to be something or nothing inside of here. You'll also note that I don't have a carrot at the beginning and I don't have a dollar sign. So technically, the numbers that we're looking for do not have to occur at the very beginning or the very end. But when we look through these examples, I think I might have coded them up that way. So it's just a coincidence. Jumping down to line 80 very quickly, you can see that the is match return value is just a Boolean. So this is just going to be true or false. Unlike the other examples that had a match object come back, you can still use match here if you want. There's also matches plural, which will give you all of the matches in a string if they exist. But I'm just showing you a couple of different variations. So you're exposed to this to play around with it. Looking at the input list, I do have the comments after for what should match. If we have a quick scan through, Nick should not match because I did say the minimum requirement if we have a quick scan through the pattern is that we have to have at least two numbers. There's no numbers in this first one. The second one, there's still only one number. The third one, still only one number. And the fourth one, this is the first match we're going to get. Now, what's kind of peculiar about this is that if we look at this part here, this pattern looks like it's supposed to have a number followed by some characters followed by other numbers. And if you look at this match here, this one's saying we have some characters followed by two numbers. So it's kind of misleading because you probably want to feel like the letters need to come between the numbers. But remember, I said that this will also match nothing. And because we're not anchored to the beginning or the end, it's actually matching these two numbers at the very end of this string. So it will say like for N, not a match, I is not a match, C and K are also not matches. So this part, none of it matches, right? But for this character here matches this first part of the regular expression, and then it's able to match nothing and then another number after it for the last part of the pattern. So you can see that it gets complicated pretty quickly, but this is just how regular expressions work. And if you, again, are not used to them, spend some time playing around with them. Use an online regex tester because there's a lot of different variations you can play with. And I assure you that when you're not used to using it, uh, it's pretty frustrating and it can be pretty confusing, but it takes some time to work with the patterns. And just to kind of prove the behavior here, I ran this example. We can see that the first few, so first three, in fact, don't match, kind of like called out in the comments here. We can see that all of the ones with two numbers do match. So there's a 42, a 42, a four, and a two. It doesn't matter if they're beside each other or not, as long as there's two, all the way through into the last ones, except the very last one, because there's only a single number. We do, in fact, need two numbers. So that's a quick look at how we can use regular expressions to do pattern matching beyond just simple hard-coded strings to see if they exist within other strings. You can use regex to replace things like starts with, ends with, contains, or even index of because the match object does have the index. And in fact, if you wanted to find multiple matches, instead of doing index of in a loop and trying to find all of the matches, you can use a regular expression to find all the matches at once. 
Now, in the third example, we saw you could already see that if you're not used to using regex patterns, they can get pretty complicated pretty fast, and that's okay. They do take some time and practice to learn. I'm certainly no expert, and I always use an online regex tester to play with them because I'm guaranteed that I'm going to miss some scenario. If you recall earlier in this video, I did say that there were performance characteristics that were different between the various ways that we can create a regex and do some matching. So if you want to see that, you can check out this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.